Hi everyone, this is Shane Armin Rowe. Lately I've been asked a lot about what browser should I be using? I want to get off of Chrome. I need something more privacy oriented. I want to block ads. I don't want people tracking me. Well, that's where the Brave browser comes in. I've been using Brave for a long time. And we're going to show you how to set this guy up and make it comfortable for you because getting into a new browser is always a little bit spooky for everybody. So we'll do a quick download. Um, we'll use the Edge browser, which of course told us we shouldn't need another browser because, you know, Edge is the best. So we don't need another browser. So Brave is really about a few different things. One, it's about blocking ads. Two, it's about blocking third-party trackers and other sorts of nonsense that follow you around the internet. Now, I know a lot of people are like, well, Shane, ads don't bother me. I don't mind seeing ads, et cetera, et cetera. Well, one of the things that a lot of people don't know is that ads actually slow down your performance. You're actually paying with your time to watch ads or look at ads. Okay, so here's the Brave browser as it comes up. It is bright white, <laughs> uh, which is not, of course, my favorite, but we're gonna show you how to tailor all this stuff. We'll go through the welcome tour. You can import some bookmarks if you like. Um, of course, they tell you about how brave, uh, how brave and sound that they are, and then the brave rewards. So uh, let's, uh, let's get started here. There's a lot to do. There's a lot to see. Let me open this up just a little bit. And the first thing we want to do is get rid of anything that looks sort of suspicious or nonsense to us. Um, there's uh, there's this, uh, these tiles. There's this news service that they offer, right? Um, so, you know, hey, listen, you could, you could turn all this stuff on. I'm going to turn everything off, and I'm going to give you the cleanest experience possible. We're going to get rid of this Brave Rewards because even if uh, you look at their ads, you're not gonna make a ton of cash. We'll click this Customize down here. Look, there's sponsored images that could come over here. Let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of background images. Maybe you like that, maybe you don't. Those stats are great though, we're gonna leave that on. Um, do you wanna see top sites or your favorites right in, the, uh, in a tab or widget scenario? Not me, I've already turned off news. All right, I'll leave the clock on, who cares? And then this will tell you some other dashboard type cards or widgets that you can throw on here. Notice there's a lot of cryptocurrency and Brave related stuff. We're gonna just go ahead and leave that empty. So we're gonna give you a nice smooth experience. You can click the gear down there or you can go to settings. And this is where we actually start making this thing look and behave the way that we want to. So obviously we'll make this our default browser. And I, I like to open in a new tab page. I don't like continuing where I left off. A lot of times I've already closed what I'm not interested in, but that's up to you. Appearance, let's get rid of this bright white and go to a dark theme. Ah, so much better. Uh, so we've disabled the home button. We want to show our bookmarks. I like showing that little bookmark bar. I don't have anything on there right now. This address bar is thin, some sort of a Mac thing. I don't know what's going on with that. That's a Windows 11 thing too. But we'll go ahead and open that up. Use the white address bar, show autocomplete, top sites and autocomplete. We want to use Brave. Um, yeah, so let's get rid of that, re that uh, Brave uh, Rewards button. So let's see. Always show bookmarks on tabs. Show full URLs. I like that. Um, you can also adjust the font size and page zoom by default. And that's kind of cool if you've got like an ultra wide monitor or you've got super, you know, 4K. You might want all of your pages to open up zoom, but you can set them on a page by page basis. You can change to a home page or a blank page instead of the dashboard. Shields, these are what protect you from ads and third party trackers. So we are going to sort of leave this alone and I'm gonna show you more about this later. Um, but you can block all cookies, not just cross site. A lot of times you can either turn cookies on and off and cookies will break a lot of the internet if you turn them completely off. But the cross site stuff is nasty. All right, so social media blocking. I'm okay with Google, I hate Facebook, I'm okay with Twitter, and I'm not a big LinkedIn fan, so I'll go ahead and customize that to my liking. And security and privacy. So there's a few things in here you might wanna look at. Um, it's totally up to you. This is a, a privacy-focused browser, so you may wanna go through the security and privacy and see if there's anything in particular that you would like to turn on and off, send daily pings to Brave, and I'll turn that off, improve Brave features. Sync, we're not gonna talk much about the syncing stuff. Um, search engine, okay. So it defaults to the Brave search engine. Now a lot of people um, are a little wigged out about using the Google search engine because we all know that Google's dirty, filthy. So you got DuckDuckGo. Um, you know what, I would suggest try to use Brave's uh, search for about a week. You can always flip to Google. And uh, you'll find out though quickly that um, 
that that Google's Google's customization is actually useful, even if they are a little creepy. I'm going to set some other things here for extensions. Not much in here you have to mess with, to be honest with you. You can leave all this stuff in here. This does support torrents, so if you decide you want to do torrents, there's also a Tor private browser, which we're going to look at in a little bit. Um, let's get rid of that Brave wallet. We don't we don't need that. I, I don't like Brave wallets. We're turning that off. I don't do the crypto thing. Okay. And you can look through these other ones if you like. There's additional settings down here for autofill settings. Some people like to maintain a little bit more control over that. Languages, uh, how where your downloads go, and you can even ask to save where each file goes before downloading, or if you don't care and you just want them to download right away, you can turn that off. Wayback Machine, I love that. You can actually go to a Wayback Machine version of a 404 page. I thought that was a really neat feature. Normally, you'd have to have an extension for that. If you're going to run something in the background, like chat or something of that nature, you'll need to make sure that's turned on. Otherwise, you could probably turn it off. Okay. So now, what we need to do is find a page that has a lot of ads or something on it that we can test the ad blocking capability. So we're going to use this GitHub page that's always been pretty useful for this sort of thing. And so right now... Um, Brave is in block mode. The shields are up for this page. And you're going to see that 90% of the nonsense was blocked here. And that's great. So you can see some things in red that it didn't block. And a lot of times, these things that aren't blocked are because users are pissed off if they're blocked because it actually decreases functionality. If you click on the little Brave shield, you can see that right now 99 plus creepy things were blocked on this page. 99 and you can actually see what these crazy things were. Look at all this. And believe me, this, this is a, an ad testing page. I get it. But I assure you, if you go to one of your favorite pages, half of these are going to appear on that page too. Right? And so there's a, there's a couple of different views. You can see simple or advanced view. Hitting this button here will flip it off and the page will reload. And then you'll see what happens when all of these things are left on. No protection whatsoever. 11% of the hosts were blocked just out of general principle, but for the most part, everything is allowed to be in there. So if for some reason you go to a page and it doesn't seem to work right, oh, you can lower the shields down and see if it works okay. Just expect the ads to come back. But you can see a few things here. There's some analytics for uh, AWS. A lot of these things, if it were blocked, would probably cause major applications not to work. Most of Facebook's nastiness is blocked but there's a few things for Twitter and whatnot that are still left on here. So, all right, so this is fine for like an ad testing thing. What we really need to do is find a site that has a lot of ads on it so you can see what this looks like. Okay, we are going to land on the CNET.com homepage, who owns news.com. We are in blocking mode. We are in blocking mode here. So let's click onto an article. And let's see what it looks like. Let's see what the good experience looks like first. There's my article. There's nothing in between. I can read everything. Nothing's popping up in my face. Now let's lower the shields, Captain. Uh, my virtual machine is obfuscating that a little bit. I apologize for that. It doesn't happen on a regular one. Now let's lower the shields and see what happens. Watch what, what happens to the CNET webpage when you turn all of that stuff back on. This, the page is still loading. That's this. We're waiting for the page to load ads. That's how much faster this page was prior to when we were blocking ads. Look at this. There's an ad on the top. There's ads constantly littering the sides. There's ads in between articles. Every place you look, ads, ads, ads. And I assure you that there are tons of trackers going on right now that are tracking what article you're reading and sending it back to interested parties who want to harvest your data and your behavior. Going back, we put the shields back up, and the page looks fantastic. It's super fast. It loaded quick. It's smooth. It's easy. So listen, if you don't, if you think you don't care about third-party tracker ads, and you should, then um, worst-case scenario, uh, do it for yourself. Because look, we blocked 310 uh, trackers. We've saved 3.8 megabytes, and we've saved 16 seconds of our lives. We got back. 16 seconds. After you use Brave for a couple of months, you will realize how much of your life you're spending waiting for ads to load. How much bandwidth or quota that you're using. All right, I see my video is moving forward here to, um, uh, to the Tor browser. So here's what happens, right? We all know that you've got some exposure if you're using a non-private browser. If you go to private mode or incognito mode, 
and you go to the same page, you're not hiding anything. You're all still here. That's why Brave comes with Tor, which is essentially a nice way of hiding your IP address, which then, of course, is hiding your identity, hiding the trackers. It's a great thing. So now that we're blocked and we're using Tor first off, this site that was harvesting our IP, it goes wacky because we're now... Uh, coming in from some other country, right? I don't even know where we're coming from. But look, our IP address is hidden, all sorts of good stuff. We are now sort of hidden. And so Tor is built right into the browser. All right, guys, listen, we could talk all day about this, but I wanted to give you an introduction and a setup. Please like the video, subscribe, check the little bell, and we'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.